Let's pretend that you're going to write a program that keeps track of people's names. Most programs have to do this. So you put a prompt up on the screen, you ask somebody to type in their name, they type in Fred. You do that again. The next person's name is George, and the next person's name is Barney. Well, nobody writes a program like this because who wants to keep typing first person, second person, third person? Obviously you can't do this. You might have thousands of people. Well, computers are very good at keeping track of large numbers of things. And in Ruby, the first data structure you come across for doing this is called an array. So you'll have something called people. And in Ruby, the square brackets start an array. So you put Fred, comma, George, comma, Barney. An array is basically a list of things. And there they are. How do you get back a particular one? Well, there's those square brackets again. Again, being a programming language, like most programming languages, Ruby likes to count from zero. So people zero is Fred, the first element. People one is George. People two is Barney. There's no people three, so you get back the special object nil if you try that. You can do a slice. Zero through one gives you Fred and George. This is similar to what we did before in the slice of a string, giving you a portion in the middle. What else can you do? Well, you can add arrays together. Does sort of the same thing as adding two strings together. Just connects them together into one. So you've got two, two arrays connected into one. You can also do multiplication, where it just repeats over and over again. Here's a new operator. Let's say we've got people. This operator doesn't exist in math. You've got this double left angle bracket. And that just adds something onto the end of the array. There's another way of doing that, which is called push. That also puts things onto the array, although you can put more than one. Like that. There's a corresponding element to push, which is called pop. Pop just pulls the last thing off of the array and returns it. So here you get catbert. And people is now one element shorter. That element has been removed. So it's different from saying last element because it removes it. There are also two operators for operating on the left-hand side of the array. If I say shift, it returns the first one, Fred. And it's called shift because it takes the first element out and all the others shift down. So George becomes element zero. And there is an unshift as well. Now, here's something to point out. It's up to now, this array has only contained strings, but I've just put a number in it. Ruby doesn't care, because Ruby is not a strongly typed language. It will let you put all kinds of things into an array. It will even allow you to put an array into an array, like that. Notice you've got the square brackets inside the square brackets. These, these nested arrays can be useful for certain things. Now these arrays are also handy for demonstrating something that we, we mentioned briefly earlier to do with the difference between changing a variable to point to something else or changing the thing that's pointed to by a variable. Now I've just created a variable called folks and it's equal to people. It contains exactly the same list. If I add somebody onto it, and then type out people. People also has somebody added onto the end. That's because they're both pointing to the same array, and I just changed it. On the other hand, if I say people clone, what I get is a copy. So now if I start taking things off of people, 
it gets shorter. But folks still has the complete list because it contains its own copy. Now something that might have occurred to you to wonder, what if I do this? Now I've just created a, a brand new array and assigned it to people. This array used to be in people and now it's no longer referenced by that. We now have no way of getting at this old array, this one that has 1138 true at the end of it. Well, in Ruby, if you lose all the references to an object, it just goes away. These values were stored somewhere in memory, but we've just essentially told Ruby we don't care about it anymore because we no longer reference it anywhere. So Ruby can use that memory for something else.